Hey guys, Will from EDM Tips. So in this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to actually finish your music. Now, one of the most common problems that producers ask me about is how they can actually get their music finished once they've come up with an idea. Because if you're anything like me, you might have a hard drive full of eight or 16 bar loops that sound really cool and they're really fun to make. But actually taking those ideas out into a fully finished five or six minute track can be a real struggle for a lot of us. So I'm gonna share with you 12 techniques that you can put into practice today and you're gonna start finishing your music in no time at all. If you find if this video useful please subscribe to my channel hit that like button and you can also download my free track finishing checklist below this video you just need to follow it through tick everything off and by the end you'll have yourself a fully finished track this checklist is the exact strategy that I've developed over 25 years of producing music and it's helped me finish hundreds of tracks some of which have been supported by some of the world's biggest DJs so you can use these techniques for your own music too okay without further ado let's hop into the first of these 12 track finishing strategies so first let's touch upon why it's actually important to be finishing your music because most music producers love coming up with the ideas but finishing those tracks is quite difficult and frustrating now this lesson is all about finishing music but if you do want me to make one on how to generate ideas let me know in the comments below and I'll make it happen now finishing music is really important for a couple of reasons one if you never actually finish music you'll never actually release music so you can't really call yourself a music producer and the second is every track that you finish your skills are going to improve because you'd have finished yet another bass line yet another drum sequence, you had another melody, you had another chord progression, and all of this compounds over time. So the more tracks you finish, the better you get at all of these skills. Now a great story I've heard that illustrates this is that there was a teacher with a class full of students and they were split into two groups. One group could spend a whole year trying to perfect this vase that they were making out of clay, and the other group could make as many vases as they want within that year. Now at the end of that year, which group do you think had the better vase? The one group that had spent the whole year perfecting this one vase, or the other group that had spent the whole year creating and finishing multiple vases. Of course, when you put it like that, it's obviously the second group, right? Now, I may have got that story slightly wrong, but it should illustrate the point. It's also worth noting that finishing music is a skill unto itself. So not only will your other production techniques improve, your skill at finishing tracks is gonna improve as well. So let's move on to powerful technique number two, and that is using a reference track in the same genre that you're producing to map out the arrangement. But not only are you mapping out the arrangement, by listening to this reference music, you'll also pick up clues about what your music should and shouldn't include. Now, as to how many elements your music should have, it really depends on the genre that you are producing or writing, but listening to a reference track is gonna be the best way that you can determine what you should and shouldn't be including in your music. I'll give you a clue though, it's probably less than you think. But a very common mistake for most producers is to actually overcomplicate their music, and listening to a reference track is gonna help you avoid doing that. Okay, technique number three, and this is super important, and this is something that I need for myself because I don't have very much willpower, but this is having strict deadlines and having real world stakes, not the tasty kind, attached to those deadlines. So for me personally, if a record label has a release date or another producer is relying me to get some music to him or her, then having someone else depending on me finishing that track by that time is the number one way that I know I'm gonna get that track finished by hook or by crook. And if you don't have external deadlines like that, then you need to learn how to set them for yourself and have real world stakes to hold them accountable. For example, if you say I'm going to finish this track by the end of the week and if I do I'm going to buy myself a new game or I'm going to take myself out for a meal with my mates and if you don't finish it then you can't do those things. That's an example of how you can set real world stakes to hold your own feet to the fire. It's uncomfortable and sometimes stresses you out but the truth of the matter is most producers never finish music because it is stressful to do that sometimes. The idea generation is great fun but it's the 5% of producers that actually train themselves to have the discipline to finish the tracks that get their music released and then ultimately enjoy all of the benefits that doing that work brings them. Okay, number four, and this is to separate out your sessions. It can be very overwhelming if you open a blank door, you know you've got to do the mixing, the mastering, the idea generation and the arrangement, and it can be, as I say, overwhelming. So something that you can do to avoid that is plan in advance what you're gonna do in each session. So for me personally, I'll try and generate an eight or 16 bar loop in the first session, then I'll have a break. The next session is gonna be developing those sounds and then bringing that out into a full arrangement as quickly as possible. Only then will I move into the mixing and then finally the mastering stage of the production process. And having the different stages of production delineated in this way just makes each process a bit more manageable. The other benefit is that each of these different stages of music production actually involve a slightly different mindset. So if I'm doing idea generation, it might be late at night, maybe I've had a beer or so. But if I'm doing the arrangement or the mixing, I'm gonna be doing it in the 
morning with a fresh head, a clear head, and I've got a slightly different mindset. So powerful technique number five is to remove distractions and treat each session as you would a job. Now again, this can sound a bit boring and, and it needs some discipline, but if you leave your phone outside of the room, close down any other apps you've got running and refer to the deadline you've set yourself and treat your session as you would a job, then that's a great mindset to get into when it comes to actually getting that track arranged into a full track. Now number six kind of ties into a couple of the previous points we've already touched upon, but it's basically limiting your time in the loop. Now, writing music in a loop is really important and it's the way I do it. I'll loop a eight or 16 bar loop until I've got something sounding pretty good, but it's very easy to then get stuck in that loop, listening to it over and over and over until you get sick to the back teeth of it. So at that point, you can either use the reference track technique to map out the structure as quickly as possible, or there is something else you can try as well. Which takes me to technique number seven, and that is to use the session view in Ableton Live, if you use Ableton, to jam out a few different ideas for arrangement. Perhaps you're triggering one loop with another loop. You're layering different clips on top of each other to find something that sounds good. And you can record that all into the arrangement view as well. Most of it might be rubbish, but you could stumble across a couple of really nice arrangement patterns that seem to work really well. You can just save those and then build the rest of the arrangement from those points outwards. Number eight is to use inspiration playlists. Now, if you've been writing a track and you don't know where to go, perhaps you don't know what to add to your loop, if you've got your favorite two or three most recent tracks in your playlist, like if you're using Apple Music or Spotify, whatever it is, listening to those tracks will give you inspiration on perhaps different production techniques you can use, different arrangement techniques you can use, and it can just jolt a couple of things in your mind that'll get things cooking again. But don't be afraid to delve into someone else's music because as David Bowie said, the only art that he views is that that he can steal from. So don't be afraid of taking ideas from other music producers because there is no true originality. Everything is based on an inspiration from something else. So embrace that mindset and don't get hell bent on being completely original. The next technique is to set up your door to template in a way that you can work quickly and efficiently and that's got some of your favorite things already programmed in so you don't need to repeat yourself time and time again. Something really simple but something that I use and it saves me hours and hours every week. Number 10 is building out favorites folders. So I've got favorites folders of my favorite samples, also my favorite processing chains and instrument chains. So if I've spent hours and hours making something that sounds really cool, I don't want to have to repeat that whole process the next time because it's going to break my flow and I want to be producing as quickly as possible so then I can get my tracks and ideas finished as quickly as possible. So favorite folders are so, so important as well as saving out those instrument chains and any other process that you're doing time and time again that you could actually automate to a degree. Okay, so we've got our rough idea mapped out. We've taken it from loop. We've used our template technique and we've taken it out into a full arrangement, but how do we know what else needs to be done to it? Well, there's a couple of techniques I've got here. One is to turn the monitor off whilst I'm listening through to the track. And that's because I don't want to be visually anticipating what's coming. I want to be putting myself in the mindset of a listener, so someone who's just hearing it. And I'm gonna take a post-it note like this, and I'm gonna make a note of everything that I can hear jumping out that needs changing. And I like to do this with completely fresh ears. So if I've come up with the arrangement the day before, I will then come and listen to it. On the first time I listen through, that's when I'll make the notes because my ears have had a rest. They're gonna pick things up that I wouldn't have noticed the day before because I was so used to working on the track. Which takes me to technique number 12, one of the most important, and ultimately what's gonna make the difference between you just having a bunch of loops on your hard drive or actually finishing and releasing tracks. And here it is. Once you've written through your notes, go through them in order and change everything you need to. Now this might sound obvious, but this is where people give up because guess what? It gets boring because when you've done that, then you give it a day off, then you rest for a day, you listen through to your track again, and again, you take notes. And then you have to work through those points, ticking them off and doing them as you go. This could take several hours. And this is the number one reason people never finish their music. They simply get caught up with the fun of generating ideas, but never actually force themselves to sit down and finish it. But I tell you, this is a key habit to develop and having deadlines and everything else that we've talked about today are gonna help you hold your own feet to the fire and actually get your music released out into the world. So there you have it guys. I really hope you've enjoyed this video today. Don't forget you can download my track finishing checklist completely free below this video and if you found it useful please smash subscribe hit the like button and i'll catch you for another tutorial very shortly if you feel you need the accountability that so many of us does check out my accelerator program below this video we've helped our students get signed to some of the world's biggest labels by using some of the techniques that i've talked about today.
Saturday and also giving weekly feedback which helps people help point things out that they may have missed and show them exactly what to do to fix those problems. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Until next time, cheers and happy producing.